It's Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. A lot to talk about today. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. I want to get right into this video. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get uh, some of the inflation numbers, CPI coming out tomorrow. Let me know what you think. Is it going to come in hotter than expected? Will it come in as expected or lower than expected? You know, I was thinking today, uh, my thoughts, I, I don't have a crystal ball, but when you start looking at commodity prices, we're looking at gold, we're looking at silver, look at oil, look at Bitcoin, everything is going up. It's indicating that inflation is getting hotter. So I would not be shocked to see the number come in higher than expected tomorrow. But with these numbers and, and this data that we get daily, you don't know how much of it's manipulated, how, how much of it's accurate, how much of it's made up, who knows. But in reality, my personal thoughts are inflation is hotter uh, than most people even believe. And I think it will come in hotter than expected. Uh, I could be wrong. It should come in hotter than expected because if you're going on what gold, silver, Bitcoin, oil, uh, go to the gas pump, it is skyrocketing. So all of this uh, is telling us that we're going to see more inflation. So it'll be very interesting to see the numbers we get tomorrow. Uh, let me know uh, your thoughts on this uh, this evening where you think the numbers are going to come in. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, when you go to the grocery store uh, this week, it's going to be more expensive. When you go to the gas pump tomorrow, it's going to be more expensive. And it just seems like uh, what's happening in the commodities market, uh, gold, silver, it, it's absolutely incredible. I can't keep up with it. Um, as I make this video right now, gold is up over $20 an ounce. Silver is up, I think, 40, 48 cents an ounce. Um, and it's interesting because I, I got a comment uh, yesterday. And somebody wrote that I'm telling people to buy gold and silver when they cannot even afford to buy gasoline. Now, I've been telling people, uh, not telling, but advising people that they should own some of this stuff going back seven years ago when it was much, much cheaper. And to this individual, this is probably one of those people, and I, I, I don't want to be judgmental, but this is probably one of those people who, you know, spent $700 to get a hotel room to watch the solar eclipse yesterday, but yet complains that they don't have any gold or silver and, and that other people can't afford it. You got to cut something out of your life. If you want to get ahead, if you want to be wealthier, if you want to protect yourself, you got to you got to cut something out of your life. I was talking to Aaron, Texas silver last night. And he said, you know, when I got my stimulus check, I took all of it and I bought silver. What did most people do? They went out and they bought toys. They bought cars. They bought vacations. They bought dumb stuff. And they didn't go out and buy any gold or silver when they were getting free money. They went out and bought more dumb stuff. So to this individual uh, that says, well, people can't afford gas and I'm telling people to buy gold and silver. If you cannot afford to go out and buy a couple ounces of silver right now, you're, you're in a bad, bad situation. Uh, I've been talking about doing this seven years ago and I remember people told me that, oh, people are going to go broke because you told them to buy gold and silver. If you were buying gold and silver uh, seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, a couple years ago, and you actually bought some of this stuff, you didn't lose any money. In fact, you protected your money. I think you did very, very well. And I don't, uh, I don't personally buy gold or silver to make money. I buy it to protect the money I have. And that's what it's for. It's insurance. It's wealth protection. And so these people out here that, oh, I'm going to, you know, oh, you should buy it when silver goes to eight and gold goes to 800. Those days are long gone, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to those people, um, it's going to cost you a lot of money now to get into the uh, precious metals game, that is for sure. I never told people to buy this stuff to make money. I told people or advised people to buy this stuff to protect their wealth. And I didn't say just go buy all gold and silver. I've always said you should own some of this stuff. should be diversified, but you should own some of this stuff. And as we're talking about gold today and to this individual uh, – who says that you know now people can't afford it because they can't afford gas? I feel sorry for those people. I really do. Uh, but you know, I would just try to figure out a way. I would maybe cut out the drinking on Fridays and Saturday nights at the bars. Maybe I'd cut out the fancy dinners. Maybe I'd cut out the trip to Disneyland with the kids. Maybe I'd cut out my vacations. Maybe I'd work an extra day, you know, uh, of the week. Maybe work a half day on Saturday. There's always something you can do. Too many excuses out there. You know, too many people say, oh, I don't have, I don't have the time to go work out. I don't have uh, the money to go buy a little bit of silver or a little bit of gold. 
it's always the excuses. The people who stop making excuses and go out there and become proactive and just put the hustle in, these are the people who are going to continue to get ahead. Costco on CNBC today, Costco uh, is, is selling up to $200 million a month in gold bars. This is on CNBC today, right here, CNBC. Costco selling as much as $200 million in gold bars monthly, Wells Fargo estimates. So to this ignorant individual who says that now people can't afford it because they can't afford gas, well, the people shopping at Costco can certainly afford it because they're spending $200 million a month buying gold bars. So they're figuring out a way to do it. They're cutting something out. They're making some type of sacrifice. Uh, they're doing whatever they have to do. But, you know, we're looking at $2,367 for an ounce of gold as I make this video, 2820 on silver. It is going, uh, it is really going uh, up. It is soaring and it's telling us, this scares me when I, I begin to see metals doing this, this scares me. The metals see trouble ahead. Uh, here's something else that's troublesome. Gas prices hit six month high, spiking more than 50% under this administration. National price for a gallon of gas, $3.60. I'm paying right now, cheapest gas I can find is right at $5 a gallon. Uh, this is going to be very, very inflationary. And, and I, would be, uh, I, I would be surprised to not see the CPI um, actually heating up tomorrow when we get the numbers. But look, I'm not shocked that they could come out and tell us that, hey, inflation's going down. They can do whatever they want, right? They're, they're probably, more than likely, they'll just come out and say, hey, inflation came down a little bit. Nothing, you know, this is great news. We all know inflation's going up. Just look at what commodities are doing. Look at what's happening at the gas pump. Petco faces downgrades amid, a sa amid sales, profit, and shares decline. This on RetailDive.com. Analysts from Bank of America say the retailer struggles are likely to continue this year and possibly into 2025. Uh, if any of you shop at Petco uh, for your cats, your dogs, your pets, wow, it is extremely expensive to shop at Petco. Petco is facing... Uh, investment and credit downgrades with sales and profits remaining under pressure for the rest of the year during the health crisis. Here we go again during the health crisis when people had all this money. They didn't go buy a little bit of gold or silver. What they did was they bought, a, a, they went out and bought a pet. And when they bought a pet, they had to go buy pet food. They had to buy pet supplies. And now the, the, the heartbreaking thing is now these people are broke uh, because the free money the free ticket, the free ride is over. And so what's happening to the cats and the dogs and the pets? Well, they're, they're going to the humane societies. They're going to the, the local animal shelters. And people aren't shopping at Petco like they used to. And it breaks my heart because, you know, so many people uh, just indulged in this time where they just thought that, that this was going to go on forever. That, that, that they would get $1,000 a week forever and the $2,500 stimulus checks that were coming in, you know, uh, every few months, that this was going to go on forever, that they would never have to go back to work, that this was not going to cause inflation. This would, this has caused so much inflation. And now who's going to suffer? It's going to be the animals. It's going to be the cats and the dogs because these people now are getting evicted. They can't afford rent. They can't afford to take care of these animals. If, you, if you've gone to a, a veterinarian lately with one of your pets, I mean, it is shocking how expensive it is uh, to go to an animal hospital or to a vet, it is absolutely shocking and people can't keep up with it. And my heart goes out to the pets at these animal shelters. If you have the means, if you have the ability to adopt a pet, I think it's a great time, especially to have a dog now uh, as an alarm system, uh, as a deterrent. If you have the means, uh, hey, go adopt yourself a dog, adopt yourself a cat. Uh, we, it, it's sad. It really, really is. And, you know, people just don't think about this stuff. They, they just are so spontaneous and it's here today, gone tomorrow. And it's just terrible. But now the animals are going to pay. Uh, small business optimism hits lowest level since 2012. Uh, it showed a reading of 88.5, uh, lowest since December 2012. Tomorrow the CPI will come out uh, and we'll see uh, if this uh, affects this number even more. Uh, very interesting. CNBC, more Americans say they're living paycheck to paycheck this year than in 2023. And here's why. Uh, this number 
that CNBC gives a 65 percent. I've read other numbers that say it's 75, 78 percent, and I would say it's much closer to that 78 percent uh, number. But 69 percent cite inflation, 59 percent cite lack of savings, 28 percent cite raising interest rates, 33 percent cite credit card debt, 28 percent cite medical and health care bills, 21 percent loss of income or layoffs, and 15 percent student loans. Uh, no matter how you slice and dice it, the majority of this country is now living paycheck to paycheck and is in very, very big trouble. And you've got to think, nothing bad has really happened yet. Wait till we begin to see really bad things. Uh, the mass, massive layoffs that are coming. We're going to see a lot more stores uh, shutter. More restaurants are going to shutter. And, and we're going to see a lot of people without jobs who are going to begin to lose homes, uh, evictions. They're going to be facing homelessness. I remember a few years ago when people were laughing uh, when I would talk about people living in cars, people uh, possibly facing uh, homelessness. Oh, what, that's a joke. These people are lazy. Um, you, you know, uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, and now these people aren't laughing anymore, are they? In fact, some of these people are probably facing homelessness themselves now. Um, we are living in a whole different world, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the country I certainly grew up in, and you can see it. I mean, it, we're here on the golf course today. It's beautiful, but all I have to do is leave the gates, drive a couple miles, and I see the tents. Uh, I see people in the park, in certain parking lots, sleeping in their cars at night. I see the dilapidated RVs. I see closed businesses. It's it's right here in the desert. It's right here, even in the desert. So, you know, uh, I'm not fooled by the blue skies and the hummingbirds and the roadrunners and the golf course. I see what's going on in the real world. Once you leave the gates, it's a whole different world. And when I go to the grocery store and prices are skyrocketing, when I go to the gas station two miles from here and it's $5 for the cheapest gas now at Arco, I understand what is going on and the pain is going to get much worse. Here's another one. The administration has secretly flown 33,000 migrants into New York City, 326,000 into Florida at taxpayer expense. What do you think about this? Please comment down below. Should your tax dollars go to flying people from all over the world into these states? I mean, this is absolutely horrifying. My question is, we have so many people right now in trouble in this country, sleeping in their cars, sleeping in tents, people losing businesses, people struggling to hang on to their businesses, uh, people who are, are getting deeper and deeper into debt, people uh, who are looking at the threat of homelessness, people who don't have opportunity, they've lost their jobs and now are working two or three jobs to make up for that one job. There's so many problems. The cost of health insurance, the cost of car insurance, property insurance, it goes on and on and on. And so our taxpayers are not going to help the people right here, not promoting small businesses. It's going to help people from all over the world to fly in to Florida and New York. Now, I don't have to sit here and get political. There is a right and there is a wrong. I believe the right thing to do is help Americans, period first and foremost, before we're helping anybody else. Why in the world are they doing this? And what do you think about this? Comment down below. I want to know your opinion of it. I, I, I think it's absolutely criminal to be doing something like this while so many people are hurting. And how about all the rural hospitals that are closing down, but yet we can fly people uh, from other countries all over the United States of America and give them $5,000 debit cards and give them free health care? I mean, this is absolutely an abomination of what is going on. Police say, F everyone, gang, sledgehammered California shops to steal nearly $1 million in cigarettes. 34 burglaries. This is happening up north of San Francisco. 34 burglaries resulting in nearly a $1 million uh, in losses. $200,000 stolen from uh, a Chanel store in Southern California. The, uh, this gang even recorded a rap video featuring a stolen Jeep. Uh, the Oakland gang, uh, based out of, uh, right here, uh, out of California, uh, the F Everyone gang, uh, one person uh, involved in this has been caught. This gang is tied into an even much bigger gang. But, you know, they're putting people, when you have the law not doing anything and this lawlessness lawlessness running rampant uh, throughout the state of California and much of the country, you're putting people in a very vulnerable position because if the police aren't going to do anything, 
if the law is not going to do anything, then you force people to do something. And this is very, very dangerous. People are not trained, for the most part, uh, to be police officers or, uh, or to be a security task force. But you're, you're, people are getting angry. Uh, store owners can, are not tolerating this anymore. Uh, and so they're having to take the law into their own hands, risking their own lives because we're not enforcing the laws. We're not allowing the police to do what they want to do. And our police forces continue to shrink. Nobody wants to be a police officer because they're afraid that they're going to get sued, lose their home, possibly go to prison. And uh, it's a job now that just is not rewarding. It, in fact, it's very risky for a police officer. And too many police, they're, they're afraid now to even defend their own lives. So it is a, uh, another reminder uh, of the breakdown in society. Here's another one. Woman charged with 11 felony counts for smashing car windshields uh, in L.A. and Santa Monica. Venice, Santa Monica, West L.A., Tarzana, Woodland Hills, all very, very nice areas. This lunatic just went out and, and, and drove around and smashed people's windshields, their pickup trucks, their Teslas, whatever. Uh, I mean, what is wrong with people? I mean, we have a society of deranged people. I've never seen anything like this. You know, growing up as a kid, you never heard about people getting their stuff stolen or destroyed like this. Not saying it didn't happen, but, you know, maybe somebody owed money, you know, there was some street justice, but uh, just, you know, going around for entertainment, destroying people's windshields, destroying their cars, uh, 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 destroying buildings. Uh, vandalizing buildings, stealing, uh, just it, it's unbelievable that people have no respect for themselves, the law, they have no respect for their cities, they have no respect for their brothers, sisters, for their, for their, you know, for other human beings. It is really, really sad. Here's another one, video, craving for more mayhem and terror. Idaho teen, 18 years old, not a, teen, not, not, a not a young teen. He's now an adult uh, man. He's accused in a plot to attack churches for ISIS. Uh, he was arrested Saturday, planned an attack on multiple churches uh, on Sunday. And as I'm reading this, I just think if you are going to a church, if you are a member of a church, uh, I hope that your church has serious security and that they are brushing up on their security. I would be very, very careful at this point being in large groups of people. I would be extremely careful being um, at a place of worship. If you are at a place of worship, you should be asking questions. What's the security? What's the protocol here if something happens? Do we have security in this church? Because if you don't, I would probably look for another church. You are a sitting duck. You are a target. And this is not getting enough news. But we're going to see more events like this unfold. And unfortunately, they won't be stopped. They're going to happen. It's going to happen, you know, maybe at a sporting event. It's going to happen at a place of worship. It could happen at a mall. Uh, you've got to be really, really careful out there. So be cautious. Exercise situational awareness. Things are happening behind the scenes. Think about you know, this this is an interesting article, but think about what we don't know. Think about what we don't know, what is taking place right now that maybe the FBI knows and some of these other alphabet agencies know. Think about what they know that you don't know. Um, we know that uh, uh, Ray at the FBI, Christopher Ray, has already been warning us many, many times about the red flags out there. So I'm going to leave it there today. Be careful, be cautious, exercise situational awareness. God bless. Have a great day. Be safe and be praying for this country. God bless.